Hello everyone, this is Jozef Nagy here and welcome back to the second part of the tutorial where I'm talking about parallelization. In the first part I was talking about parallelization and decomposition methods in OpenFOAM and I set up the base case and now I'm going to start with the parallelization. So I'm going to jump in and go into the folder of the simple method and as I mentioned now I could just type in compressible interform press enter and run the simulation on one core but I want to do it on four cores let's say four cores good what do I have to do so I set up everything and now I have to decompose my mesh and for that I need certain dictionary in system which I don't have it is called decompose particle so I'm going to copy it Actually, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to do it for all the cases. I'm going to copy it from the three-dimensional case in system. You, you have it in this, the three-dimensional case, decompose part dictionary, and I'm going to copy it into simple, the hierarchical system yes and then the scotch and maybe also into the base case maybe we need it maybe not good now simple good now we will have this decomposed particle very good let's take a look at it this is the same what i i showed you this here in the user guide so number of subdomains, I want to run a four times parallel simulation and I want to use the simple method, not the hierarchical. This is the second case, simple. And now I'm interested in the simple coefficients here and I want to divide it up twice in the X and twice in the Y direction. Why? Because I want to show you the difference between the different methods. Okay, now I can, and I'm going to ignore everything else. Okay, now I save this and what do I do? Now at this point, after I set up my case, as I would set it up for a single simulation, now I type in decompose par and press enter. What's happening here? Now we have some output here. It says processor 0, 1, 2 and 3. Number of cells with 3200 on all processors and this makes sense because we had 12,800. If you divide that by 4 then you have 3200. So we have the same number of cells for all 4 cores. Which is very good because we had this nice symmetry. So this is the case. We had this nice symmetry and we can we have actually the same number of cells for all the four cores and then there is this number of faces shared with processor one but I, I'm kind of coming to that in a little bit so in the first step the mesh is divided up and then in this step the fields like alpha p u t are divided up between the cores and what happened now we have processor folders not just zero constant and system but actually processor folders and what do we have in the processor folders we have a zero and a constant and if we run the parallel simulation then openform will take a look at these entries and will save within the processor folders and not outside in our case folders Good. Now what I want to show you are the different uh, subdomains. For that I'm going to enter all the four processor folders and let's take a look at zero and alpha. So the alpha values on the first core. And here now we have a list of 3200 entries, entries. And these are the entries that we have in our first subdomain so we have here a lot of water for example and a little bit of air and i'm going to execute here phone to vtk and i'm going to go into the 
pro processor one folder, execute form to VTK, then two and three. Now I go out of it, the processor folders. Let's take a look at processor folders again. And now I have VTK folders, which will have only the VTK files of the subdomain. And why do I need that? In order to visualize the, the subdomains and see how these decompositions are. Okay, for that I'm going to open up Paraview without the dummy file because we have actual VTK files. So let's wait till Paraview loads. Then I'm going to open up all the VTK files and take a look at the subdomains. Good, now we have Paraview. Let's open up processor zero. Okay, now without any comment, I'm just going to open up the other VTK files. Okay, so two and then three. Okay, so this is our geometry. And now maybe let's, yeah, I'm using the white color for the processor zero. Then maybe this green color for one. Then this orange for two. And I'm using blue. So here now you can see our subdomain. So this region will be calculated on core number one, this on core number two, this on core number three, and this on core number four. And these are our processors zero, one, two, and three. If I go back here to this output, so we had 3200 cells on each core if I'm showing you this the mesh you can just count them if you're bored these are 3200 cells here and here and now we have number of faces shared with processor 1 80 and these are these faces here between the subdomains and why is this important if you think back uh, i was talking when i was talking about discretization schemes for the discretization we needed values from the neighboring cells and for example for the calculation of the divergence term here we need the values from this cell but this cell is on a different core so this core does not know the value of the well of the velocity or whatever on of in this cell and for that we need a communication between core number zero and core number one so we will have 80 faces through which the pro the cores have to communicate also here faces shared with processor two we have 40 these are these faces and through these faces Core number zero has to communicate with core number two or one and three as you want to put the numbers. Okay, so and we can actually take a look at these entries here. For example, in processor zero, zero and alpha, if I go to the very bottom, the boundaries here you see the walls which are zero gradient then the default faces and then we have two additional boundaries called proc boundaries zero to one and here we have 80 cells it's 80 faces i'm sorry and we have a list of ones and zeros and then processor zero to two and we have zeros on that processor why do we have ones and zeros on processor 
0 to 1, this is 0 to 1. If I take a look at our alpha, here we have 1s and a couple of zeros. Makes sense. Okay. No, don't modify it, please. And now, for example, here, number of processor patches 2, which makes sense. We have two neighbors, 1 and 2 here. And then the number of processor faces, this is the sum of 80 and 40, 120. And we have a total number of boundary faces of 6,520. Why? Because we also have the boundary direction, the faces in the, in the empty directions. So for a simple algorithm, we have a very nice decomposition of our, of our domain with the equal number of cells. And this is what I wrote here. So usually we want to have equal number of cells on each core and a low number of faces between the cores. So we want to have the same number of cells on the cores and we want to minimize this communication between the cores. Because if uh, you have a very low number of cells on a core, then the calculation of the matrix equation is going to be very fast. And then the cores have to wait for the communication between the cores. And this is a limiting factor in parallel simulations. You cannot just parallelize up until you only have one cell on each core, because this does not make sense, because then you, your course will wait for the communication. Okay, but this is going to be the simple method. Now let's just go out of the simple case and enter the hierarchical case. Now let's take a look at the decomposed part. Here we have four subdomains and the hierarchical method. So I'm going to take a look at these coefficients here. I'm specifying x, y, and z. So this is x, y, and z. So the same as in the simple case, but again, I'm going to use two and two. I execute decompose par. Now I have more or less the same output here, 3200, the same amount of faces between the processors. So this does look very similar to simple. I'm going to go into zero and execute foam to VTK. Then, oops, uh, no, it's not what I wanted. I want to go into one and execute foam to VTK, yes. Then in two foam to VTK and three foam to VTK. Now we have the VTK files in our processor folders. Let's just open them up without any comment. So I want to go into hierarchical, VTK zero, then one, and I'm going to have to move them, translate them. But at first, let's just open them up. Oh, VTK, yes. And then the third one, Good, now translate them, 1.1 1 .1 in the x direction, and now let's just use the same colors, this was this green, this was our orange or yellow. Okay, so now, as you see, simple and hierarchical are very similar. They are actually equal. We have the same uh, distribution of our cells, the same uh, number of cells on each processors, and we have the same number of faces between the processors through which the course will communicate. Okay, now let's take a look at the Scotch algorithm, which uses a certain strategy. Let's take a look at that decomposition method. 
for that I'm going to use the scotch method. There are no coefficients here. If you take a look at the user guide, you can actually change certain strategies. And for that, please take a look at the scotch decompose source file. Okay, but I'm not going to talk about st strategies within uh, Scotch. I'm just going to save it. And by the way, this method, Mattis method is very similar to Scotch. It uses a certain algorithm. Okay, now let's just use Scotch decompose par. And now if we take a look here, we are selecting Scotch. So very good. We have 3200 on each processor but now as you see we have a different number of faces shared but before i take a look at these numbers i'm going to go into processor zero execute foam to vtk and open up the vtk files Two and three. Very good. Yes. And now without comments, just open up the scotch VTK files. And now you see that there is a difference. I have to translate. The VTK files in PowerView, but let's just open them up. Okay, now let's just translate them. 2.2 in the X direction. And let's just use the same colors here white, then green, then orange, yellow, and then blue. And now you see that there is a difference. All of a sudden, these cells will be calculated on core number zero, and these cells will be calculated on core number one, or processor number one. Okay, so now let's take a look at this output here. So for processor zero, which is this subdomain, We have uh, the number of fa faces shared with processor one. So this processor or this core, we have a number of 121. So these are these faces here. And then we share 15 faces with processor number three. So this processor here, then for processor uh, one, we actually have three processor uh, patches. So we are communicating with all the uh, three processors. We have 121 here. We have 39 here and we have 26 here. And then you can just take a look at two and three. It is very similar. So this is then two and this is three. So as you see, Scotch did not divide up our domains so nicely, but this nice geometrical decomposition can only be done if your domain has these symmetries, these X and Y symmetries. If you have some kind of complicated real life geometry, or as I showed you here, if you have an inlet tube and an outlet tube, then you might not be able to use simple because then you would uh, have only a small amount of cells on one core and a, a large amount of cells on the, on the other cores. And then in those cases, maybe it makes sense to use Scotch because Scotch tries to distribute the number of cells equally. So, but that, that you have to take care for your own case what your decomposition looks like. Remember that here 
the common you have uh, you will have more phases through which the process the course have to communicate but for this uh, small case this will not make a difference but for cases with a lot of cells with millions of cells there you should take care of this decomposition and you should minimize the number of faces between your cores okay so now i i visualized the decomposition methods the differences between them now i can actually start the simulations but at this point i would like to stop recording now i hope that you enjoyed the second part of this tutorial and that you learned something i would like to thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the third part of this tutorial.